What's good, YouTube, man? I'm back with another video. I'm going to just get straight into it, man. No talking needed. So I got this little, you know, I wouldn't call this a breakdown, but I'm basically just going to be showing what I noticed and what I picked up from Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence, man. Hopefully this don't get copyrighted and removed and stuff like that. So, you know, I know a lot of people think that, you know, since my channel not that big, you know, uh, the stuff won't get copyrighted or blocked, but it has in the past. So, yeah. If it stay, if the video stays up, then this is what you'll get to see. But if it don't, then you're probably going to see it. So I'm going to get straight into it. Let's get it. So basically right here, this is how I see the, I see the fight with Bud and Arrow going. You know, a lot of counterpunching, a lot of moving, as you can see from Kell Brook, you know. He's trying to basically like circle the ring and kind of be like elusive, which I think Terrence Crawford is going to do at some point. And as we can see, Errol Spence is good at cutting the ring off. You know, he know how to, where, where to, what spots to be in, you know, so you don't, that, so you're not moving at your own will. You know what I'm saying? I think that's what Derek James meant when he said, you know, uh, he Errol going to make you fight his fight. Yeah, I think so. You know, I think he can make him fight his fight as well. I think he can make him fight his fight and I also think that he can put him in situations where he making him do things that he don't really want to do you know what I'm saying but that's just an example of how you know he cut the ring off he very good at cutting the ring off and stuff like that so I don't think you know he gonna be able to move the whole time that's why I think Terrence Crawford versatility gonna have to kick in that he gonna have to do something else besides just trying to move the entire time you know even if he is counter punching also I want to mention that a lot of Terrence Crawford opponents either were unwilling or did not know how to cut the ring off against him. They kind of just followed him around the ring. Guys like Jeff Horn, John Molina, Felix Diaz, for example. Uh, I think Victor Postal knew how to cut the ring off, but I don't think – I think he was worried about the counterpunching. Of, but So one thing about Terrence Crawford is – he don't move unless you do something to make him move, at least at 147 pounds. Now, I did notice against Victor Posta, he was just circling the ring and utilizing the entire ring voluntarily. But now I notice, you know, he only moves when he really is forced to by his opponent. Like, when he feel like he should not stand there, he just going to instinctively move. And I think that that's what he's going to do against Spence, you know. That's a part of the... I think the smart thing that he can do against Spence is just be elusive as possible, not taking no type of punishment. I think Spence only be having success when guys allow themselves to be hit. I never see Terrence Crawford allow himself to get hit. You know what I'm saying? You know, he rarely takes punishment. He's one of the guys, like, you never really see his face marked up or nothing like that. You know, he always lead a fight looking clean by the face. You know what I'm saying? Rarely do you ever see like marks on his face or anything. I, I don't really, I haven't really seen him marked up. Like, only in just one fight, he looked really looked marked up when he had like that swollen eye against Brook. Now that's that's gonna come into to play. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, you know, he don't really take punishment. He don't just sit there on the ropes and just let you, you know, tee off, tee off on him and stuff like that. He never a stationary target, so it's so hard to hit this dude. You know what I'm saying? He very tricky to hit. Now, this is very important right here because this is what kind of played a factor into everything that came with this fight. And I think it's, people should keep this in mind, right? So, Sean Porter is smaller than Bud. His reach is shorter than Bud. So, he's a real aggressive guy, real aggressive guy. He likes to come forward and stuff like that. So, you see Bud, you know, he's prepared for, you know, Sean Porter to lunge in. He's been working on that all camp. You know what I'm saying? He know the only way that Sean Porter going to get some punches off is if, you know, he has to lunge in. So the whole camp, he's preparing for this shit. You know what I'm saying? He prepared for him to lunge in. So you see right here, he's lunging in on this dude, you know, trying to get the punches off. And that's when he eventually ends up getting caught. You know what I'm saying? But I want you to pay attention to what's really going on. You know, most of his opponents have been smaller than him or had some kind of advantage when it came to like getting their shots off, whether if they were too small or the reach or something, just something along them lines. I think Spence won't have these problems. You know what I'm saying? And I also think uh, Spence doesn't, you know, 
have to do certain things because of his size advantage, at least amongst other opponents compared to other opponents that uh, Crawford has fought. So he can just jab. And also, Sean is reckless. Spence is not reckless. Spence is intelligent. Sean is also intelligent, but Sean has to be somewhat reckless against, you know, taller guys because, come on, how else is he going to, you know, get in punch range? He can't. He got to be. Like, that's one thing, you know, you got to sell out to get inside. Always. You got to sell out. So you're going to take some shots coming in, and Sean is aware of that, you know. So to get inside, you're going to have to sell out. You know, you're going to have to take some punches. You're going to have to take some leather, man. And that's what Sean already know. He's been fighting like that his whole fucking career. So, yeah. Sean, you know, style kind of, you know, bit him in the ass because – he had to lunge in, and he just ran into them damn punches, straight dead down into them damn punches. So he was done, you know? He was done. I'm going to say shout out to the dude that told me that everything that I post on my channel is just opinions a couple months back. So this just completely just debunks that retarded statement. Because, like I said in my other videos, right, Terrence Crawford, whenever he fights a left-handed fighter, he does not switch, bro. He fights them left-handed the entire time. He comes out as left-handed, and he finishes the fight as left-handed. This is Felix Diaz, a left-handed fighter. And as, as far as I can see, Bud has only fought two left-handed fighters in his entire career. From what I see, I might be wrong, but from what I saw, he only fought two left-handed fighters in his entire career, and he fought them both left-handed the entire time, bro. The entire time. So this is what I'm saying, right? He fought them both left-handed the entire time. And I think that Spence, right, since Spence is already naturally left-handed, it's going to be easier for Spence to, you know, establish his jab. Because, you see, people like to talk about how Spence is front foot heavy. It's not that he's front foot heavy. He's doing things to land his jab. You know, sneaky, right? I mean, I guess you can say he lunges and stuff like that. He does lunge, but it, it it's, it's, it's strategic. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, a flaw thing like a Julius Santango or some shit like that. And all fighters lunge when they try to land shots. It just, you got to be creative. When you in pro boxing, you have to be creative. You know what I'm saying? Punches just don't come easy. You got to figure out a way to, like, sneak them punches in. And that's what I think Errol Spence do. Like, especially against, like, Danny Garcia, when he was, like, you could say he was lunging or something like that. It's, it's just a sneaky way to uh, get your jab off without your opponent really anticipating it that way. You know what I'm saying? Because it's coming from, from such an awkward angle or, like, a different angle than you used to. So this is what I'm saying, right? Spence won't have to do that because it's going to – the stance is just going to cancel each other out. It's just going to be like that one video that I did a couple uh, – like, probably last month or so. And uh, it's just going to be like the same thing, you know. This two left-handed guy, Smith's going to be able to land his jab, you know, pretty easily when it comes to, like, as far as, like, you know, it being available for him. He won't have to do no extra shit like he do against right-handed guys. So that's what I'm saying. Crawford, if he's really smart, right, like people say he is, he going to come out and fight right-handed. Now, if, if he – I'm going to say this, though, and I know a lot of people are not going to like this. If Crawford comes out left-handed against Spence, he's overrated. I'm going to keep it on it. Because that means that he's not good. Just He's not equally good in both stances. You know what I'm saying? So if he come out left-handed, he's overrated. Because he do that again. He do the same thing against every uh, left-handed fighter. So that just shows me. If he come out right-handed, it's going to show me that, okay, he can win a fight in both stances against whatever stance. You know what I'm saying? But if he come out left handed, it's gonna show me like, ah, oh, nah. He he like a he like a guy that's kind of like you know, you know he good at something that he found a, a spot for. You know what I'm saying? If you know what that means. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. He fight everybody left handed. No, he fight every left hander left handed. So I think that's gonna be a Spencer's advantage, honestly, because he don't have no extra shit to land his jab. It's going to be an easy way to land his jab. You know what I'm saying? Easy way to land his jab. It ain't going to be so complicated to land it because the stance is not, you know, can't, uh, the stances is not, you know, uh, blocking each other. Like, you know, they both got their hands 
they lead hands is, you know, basically just free. You know, it's no not going to be a lead hand battle and stuff like that. So this is what I want people to notice. What I'm noticing here is like, you know, whenever somebody closes the distance against Bud, like I've said before, he'd rather just tie you up, you know, because he don't want to try to fight that phone booth kind of fight. You know, fight close quarters, fighting in the pocket. He don't really fight like that. He would rather keep you at the end of his punches and stuff like that. So that's what he moves for. And that's a lot of times you see him sticking out his jab. You know, it's really, to, you know, he kind of gauged in distance. And, you know, he basically just trying to, you know, see where his opponent is at. Or he trying to bait him in on a counter punch or something like that. But, you know, he does a lot of different things with his lead hand sometimes. So that's what I noticed. You know, he clinches up. That's It's a brilliant strategy, you know, just to clinch up. Because you got to think, like I said in my other video, if your opponent can't throw no punches, how is he going to beat you? You know what I'm saying? He can't beat you if he ain't throwing no damn punches. So he eliminates your offense by clinching you up. The referee got to reset everything. So we reset. We get it going. You know what I'm saying? We reset back to the middle of the ring, and you got to work all over again to create that distance all over again I mean, just to, to stop that distance close the distance again you know that's why it's so frustrating fighting Terrence Crawford you know now this is one of the elements that makes that leads me to believe that Errol Spencer just an uh, overall better fighter than Terrence Crawford because he can actually fight on the inside he don't avoid the inside like Crawford do and he don't just clinch up he, got, he can fight in the inside. He can create shots on the inside. We don't really see Crawford do that. He don't fight that phone booth type of fight, you know, that in-the-pocket type of fight. You see Errol Spence able to create them shots and openings fighting off the inside. But also, what I want you to realize is, you know, all the time, this dude is gauging the distance. So he this is a really good fighter, my dude. You know, he can gauge the distance. You see how he put that jab out there? That's That's great boxing, bro. He set them combinations up in the pocket, bop, bop, and then he measured them out again with the jab so he can know where the dude is at and stuff like that so he can know where he can throw his shots from, man. Great boxing. Now, this is another example of, you know, being smart in situations and knowing what to do in certain situations. Like I said, Bud know how to, cl to clinch his opponents and, you know, tie up his opponents to prevent him from taking – prevent himself from taking punishment, you know. But I think the Spence, I see it in every fight. He, I think he, like, grown used to people trying to hold him based on the style that he got. So he just gained a lot of experience on how to break out of clinches. Now, you could see about two or three times in this sequence where he had Kell Brook hurt while he broke out of that damn clinch. So I don't know if he going to be able to do this against Bud because I do think that Bud is stronger than him, like, on a physical level. But see how he just breaks out that clinch. And none of this stuff is reckless. You know what I'm saying? He's not lunging down on this dude recklessly at all. You see that? So it's like he's never, he tried to clinch him up, but he just couldn't. He broke out of it. You know, and I've seen Sean Porter break out a couple of clinches from uh, Bud a couple of times. So I think Spence should be able to do it. You know what I'm saying? It all just going to depend on how this fight plays out, you know? But if Spence is in like top form, top shape, and he able to break out them clinches, it might be a, a, a short night for Bud. You know what I'm saying? Now, if Bud just too elusive for Spence, and Spence really can't get to him, hey, it can mess around to be a short night for uh, Errol Spence as well. You know what I'm saying? So we just want to have to see how everything plays out and how these guys are actually going to approach the fight. See, I don't want to come to no, you know, preconceived notion or false conclusion or anything like that because I don't know what these guys are going to bring to the table. All I know is, man, it's going to be a lot of different possibilities that can play out. And I'm just trying to keep my mind open for any possibility. You know what I'm saying? Almost as if I was actually preparing to fight one of these dudes or something like that. You know what I'm saying? You can't just expect one thing in your head and train for that or just expect that. Because what if they bring something different to the table? You ain't going to be prepared for it. So you got to be prepared for all things. You know what I'm saying? I think certain matchups and certain certain styles benefit Crawford. Certain matchups and certain, you know, styles, like stylistically, benefit you know Errol Spence. You know, different types of fights. Like a dog fight is gonna definitely benefit, you know, Errol Spence. But an elusive thing where you know he Terrence Crawford is like boxing, moving, counter punching, you know, turning, you know, trying to use angles, just trying to be elusive. 
and just box. You know what I'm saying? I think that's that fight kind of favors Bud because he got the length, he got the foot speed, you know, he got everything. He got all the tools needed to make it an easy fight for himself. That's what I think. You know what I'm saying? Now, Spence and Derrick James might have a different mindset. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But that's all I got for this video, man. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm out, bro.